welcome y'all. I have to say, it is with some trepidation, I assume the responsibilities for chairing the commission with your support, and I, but I do want to say to all of my, my colleagues that uh, I also um, am packing two hearing aids, and my hearing is not good, so I beg your indulgence on, on that at any time when I may have to ask for some clarification of anything that's been said. So um, let's just uh, introduce ourselves as um, members of the commission and and, uh, and visitor. I'm Chris Palamas, uh, chair of the Disability Commission. I'm Ruth McGrath, secretary. Okay. Okay. Introduce yourself. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Hello. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'm Gay Tom Thornton. What's your name? Gay Thornton. Okay. okay. Thank you. Should have Glad you're here. Hi, I'm Beyond to do an intern. My name is Satish and I'm part of the Board of Disparities. City Councilor, Mary Linda Desmond, ADA Coordinator. And our friend? Uh, Judy Kimberly, oh, a member of the Commission. My name is Ken Pratt. I'm a Salvo resident. Good to see you, Ken. Good to be here. All right, so our agenda for today, first of all, um, would be uh, public comment. Um, Ken, do you uh, want to say anything today? I can be quick. Uh, a few meetings ago, I put on the record that I was assaulted, and I am in the process of getting NHA to remove the person we did go to court. He's now under probation with random drug testing, but he is still living in the building in room 712. We'll see how soon it takes NHA to get rid of a person who in a drunken rage would assault me. The officer did state that I'm in a frail condition but after 12 years of martial arts, I was able to use appropriate, not excessive force. I do worry about many other people with or without disabilities in the building. Yeah, and Kara Clifford and NHA needs to clean up the drunks and the addicts ASAP. Rest my case. I can help you with that if you want. So I, I, I believe what, what, <coughs> what you're indicating is that perhaps this commission should meet with the housing authority. Yes. I, I, uh, I do basically ask <coughs> us to be involved in, and, and, and at least have a conversation about safety and security. Uh, in the building and the immediate site? Yes. However, the commission deems necessary. I think it would be appropriate for us to do that. Is there any disagreement with that as an appropriate course of action? I agree as far as, far as the assault part of it. That's handled by the police department. Oh, absolutely. We're not but about... I agree about the safety part of it and people there no matter what disabilities or not, we're looking at people's lives there. So, and we'll move forward with a, a, um, a meeting with appropriate authority at the Housing Authority about the, the general issue of security um, in the area as it is shared with the, the Senior Center. That's a, Chris, that also? I think that if we could possibly get the director, she's really good to work with. She's helping a disabled person at John Childers, and this person wanted to sign a handicap sign. 
She was a stage four cancer woman, young girl, and I think she got that award. And apparently she had sent a letter from Captain um, her cancer doctor, Dr. Smith and so forth, that she needed to have an assigned handicap area because of the walking conditions. So it went on for three months. She called me and I got a hold of the director. She was excellent, excellent. She said, we will have it there. We'll call her and ask her if she wants her plate number on it or her room number. So she selected her room number. They placed it within two days. We can certainly talk to them about whether they have executed their full self-evaluation. Yes, sir. I have found Miss Clifford to be incredibly non-responsive. I have written letters. I have gone to meetings with my daughter. And I have no faith in Kara Clifford. We'll uh, pursue our conversations with the Housing Authority and see if we can open that line of communication. I think just that NHA knows that the ADA has their eye on this situation would be significant. Right. Thank you. Sent me we'll, good. We'll do so. Thank you. Okay, our, our next uh, item you need to make a motion? To I second motion. it. I make a motion uh, what Chris has just stated in regards to that we make an appointment with the housing authority. I second, I second it. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Approval of the uh, September minutes. I don't know, have we, have y'all had an opportunity to review them? Are there any uh, corrections or concerns with September? Uh, do we have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. I second it. Second it. I'd just like to make a, a note here that, uh, you know, we had the guests talk about the subway in Florence. I have heard that that subway is closed. Yeah. It was in the paper. Yes. <coughs> yep. And the subway is now, now closed, so that particular concern is that. eliminated. Yeah. So, um, is there see the motion is on the table Did all in favor of the motion aye any opposed okay. agenda item what we want to do is review three of the model policies that we will be recommending to the city for adoption as part of the self-evaluation and what we have done is to extrapolate models of what i think are the uh, the key policy elements and this is particularly in light of specific circumstances that have come before um, before the commission and so I, I wanted to have this opportunity to go over them a little bit so that the members of the commission and and of the public will be informed this is not the final policy this is what we believe should be be recommended first of all because that they are in order, um, the grievance procedure, reasonable modification policy, and effective communication policy. The grievance is really uh, the policy that should be undertaken when a person believes that a significant problem has arisen that is not consistent with the requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act, and that matter of a problem may be elevated to the point of a formal grievance. We thought that that should be um, <coughs> strengthened. When general problem solving arises, we simply take actions, and any department could take actions to fix that problem, but if it is persistent, as it was for the deaf resident, who came before the commission, that should be elevated to a formal uh, formal grievance. Uh, the current grievance procedure is, um, is both shorter and I think not as formal. We're asking for a process in which there is a verbal or written complaint. 
that includes the description of the alleged discriminatory incident or action and other information related to that, including the name of any employee or representative of the town involved. The complaint should include, of course, uh, identify the complainant. If, and importantly, that assistance would be provided to any person who needs to document the reasons for their complaint. I think you can think of what happened with the, the deaf resident, that that is part of where, right from the beginning, things, things broke down and that there was no actual documentation of the concern or issue that was being brought. The complaint is then uh, submitted um, as soon as possible, no later than 60 calendar days after the alleged discriminatory incident. It's an incident or condition. If the condition persists, you, you have a, you know, run out a, uh, um, a time period in which you could submit it because a discriminatory or non-compliant condition persists. We then have a process. The ADA coordinator meets with the complainant, clarifies the facts, responds in writing um, and responds if necessary through means of effective communication. The one thing that I am concerned about that is that in some circumstances, the ADA coordinator may have been involved in a circumstance right from the beginning so that the ADA coordinator um, may um, it might be useful to amend this to also have a secondary person who could hear the complaint in a circumstance that the ADA coordinator is simply too deeply involved to be objective uh, about the process. Your concurrence with that? Is there general agreement on that? Yes. We will draft up some amending language then on this. This might be a stupid question, but uh, when we're talking grievance, I'm going to hang up. Are we only talking city employees? Are we talking no, about no. the public? It is, it is any discriminatory action under the ADA. This is the, the city's <laughs> obligations to comply with the ADA. So it's anything that falls within the purview of the municipality's obligations. Okay, because I was looking at this yeah. and about the. <coughs> See, that's what I thought it was for city employees. Yeah. But it must. This would be like say somebody's walking down the street and, right. and they're in a wheelchair and they ask and ask and ask, can get something fixed? It's not going anywhere, they can file a grievance. Yep, and that would be to the to the either department where they've asked or they yes. can basically identify, you know, any appropriate representative of the of the city. Brooke, in an example that was like when the daytime got hurt on the side of the city building, the lawyer took right over and handed it over. Yeah, very often when things get elevated to a more formal process, you will see, you know, first of all, that it goes up the chain of command much quicker, and then if necessary, counsel for the city will be involved. Because the current grievance procedure very quickly refers to um, the Department of Justice or other civil rights complaint. Essentially, what we're going to argue is you don't want to have that happen. You want to resolve the complaint locally. But if a person is attempting to resolve things through a local process, if they are not successful at doing that, they have not basically run out the clock on their ability to uh, bring a discrimination complaint to a federal entity. Yeah. Cool. So we will, we will amend the language on this. Again, we're going over this. This is first draft. I want to discuss this with you all before we um, discuss it with other departments or or come up with a final draft for presentation. So I make a motion for that. Mm -hmm. Do we need to move, or is this just an open discussion? Because we will. Because we're adding. Um, or we could do all three and then um, and then summarize any additional draft language and have a single motion as we conclude. Does that work? Yeah. For you? Okay. Yeah. Because there's actually dots that connect these three. This Got is it. the this is the grievance procedure. Yep. Now as you remember, what we did 
on hearing from the uh, from the deaf president was that we made a recommendation as a to the city as a reasonable modification to policy or procedure. So our next is on this page 13 is the number is the reasonable modification policy, and this explains that. The general obligation to make reasonable modifications to policies and procedures to accommodate needs of a person with a disability, um, etc. Whenever <coughs> such modification is needed to resolve an issue, unless it can be demonstrated that the request would impose an undue burden or fundamental alteration of the program. That's formal legal language. Those are the, the limits to the obligation. They're called legal defenses. The significant thing later in the agenda, we will we'll refer back to our meeting with the mayor, but this general uh, point that we made in that conversation and we will make in a number of times is that if a solution is necessary to overcome a limitation in somebody's participation on account of a disability, if that is reasonable, if it is not unduly burdensome financially or administratively, or it doesn't change the program, <coughs> then the requirement is under the ADA of this willingness to solve problems. So this is the general uh, policy that, uh, that asserts that. Chris, excuse me, it's saying on your town, Shouldn't it say town slash city? Yep. Yeah, we're, we're editing this. This was actually, I should identify this. This initially came from um, a report that submitted by Independent Living Resources to the town of Weymouth in yeah. 2010. We're using these as the models. We'll redraft them and we will get all of the references appropriately to the city. I was going to suggest a few reference we've done it. I go through it, change towns to city, change the addresses, set it up correctly, and then mail everybody a draft to the specimen. This is what uh, Deandra is working exactly. on, is that, is that editing. Um, and so Deandra will, we'll, we'll get the, the language changed and she can yeah. and bring it to you so it can be distributed before. Okay. That's what we got to report that yeah. we we'll do much better. We will endeavor <laughs> next time to distribute before the, before the meeting so you have the language in hand. We're learning. We're trying to get organized here. So this is, again, this is a centerpiece, is a reasonable modification. Um, so in the final paragraph, this is on page 14. It says, Final decision regarding request for reasonable modification. If the ADU if the ADA coordinator's opinion it might represent an undue burden or alteration will be made by the mayor. Thank you. Yeah. So if it if the waters are deep if there's a potential administrative complexity, that is in fact um, essentially what we pursued in, in this instance. We realized that this was being taken um, to the mayor, um, and it really the complexity is administrative. It's not that the costs of the solution are that high, but it basically it, the mayor has the authority to work with the departments to secure the installation of the mirror requested if the resident is to occupy um, the home they Cool. So that's the part that's relevant there, is the reasonable modifications policy. And the third one is the one that is headed effective communication. And this is um, the longest because it gets into some detail on what constitutes effective communication. <coughs> but this is the, uh, the part that uh, essentially, um, in that instance of a resident who is deaf, a person who has limited hearing, limited vision, limited ability to speak 
while the statute doesn't write it in these terms, we would also extend it to um, limited ability to process information or, or other condition that impacts on communication. You provide um, either service, support, or a technology that makes the communication effective. Chris, for, as an example, say by transportation and parking. I think all the committees or commissions or boards should have these available when they're speaking. Because if you have difficulties here, which you know, and I do too, I'm deaf on one side. Without this, the voices are very difficult to hear. Yeah, in, in fact, I think one of the things that we want to proceed to do when we have the general conversation with the department heads would be to take an inventory of how much technology is there in the city. I don't think we know. We know that here we are, are mic'd up. We bought this. Yep. The Commission on Disabilities did. We would not have it. I can tell you that there's a loop of the council chambers that no one knows where the headsets No one knows where the headsets are. That is, that is very I'm typical. To use it. That, that's, that's true in the state where I was told the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance was embarrassed in the meeting because of the lack of assistive listening systems. They apparently ordered a box full of multiple assistive listening systems, which were found unopened a year later and never distributed. So the thing, we, we will need an inventory and then we will just think about what should the distribution be and, and in, in part is where should technology be located and where might it readily be provided on an as needed basis and, and i don't think we can come we will come up with that in conjunction with um, department heads and other employees we, we we simply can't say we would say all and everywhere let's see what we've got where it's located and it's not only a matter of the technology being provided, but then have people have to be trained in how to use it. Exactly. Also, too, in council chambers, for city council meetings, we do have a setup. <laughs> you can put them on, and it's for people that are hard of hearing. Because from one, one city council meeting, I, my hearing aids were being taken care of, so they applied it on me. But I felt terrible that it was so heavy. It's called my it worked. It's called a loop of the last time I tried to use it up there, which only had one of the headsets were. Well they had not me. Uh, who who found them? I mean, is Bill the maintenance guy. I mean the, the people the people that do these and set them up for us, that was not a problem. As soon as something like that happens, this is what we want to process. It's not enough to say, well, I'm sorry, we can't find the headsets so and nobody knows how to use them. That's exactly when, you know, um, training should be instituted. So let's, let's report those incidents. What we had was an extreme example that someone was put at a tremendous um, dislocation, right, of their, of their housing because of the lack of communication technology. What you will see in the other parts of the policy, these are called, and this is just again, it's legal language, they don't call them communication aids uh, or services, they call them auxiliary aids or services. That's just legal language, that's the language of the statute. Um, but what is meant there is communication <coughs> aids and services. Um, we have to look at this and perhaps look at the language of where the request should be made when we say program directors to clarify who that means because we don't want all of those requests coming here across Linda's desk. We want it to be dispersed to the multiple departments so they basically know and are trained in responding to a request or need. Again, this is um, what happened initially. There was some meeting with the deaf resident. There was no sign language interpreter provided or any understanding of any potential communication aid or service. That's where that process broke down. The policy on the following pages 
begins to elaborate some of the areas in which these alternative services and technologies are needed. The first is an alternative format policy. And alternative formats are alternatives to traditional print. And that can be from the enlargement of print, or it can be the translation of print into sound or, or other means. Also, the two press. Remember, Ruth, we had a huge meeting with was it Comcast? And Rodney Coon, who is the conclusion of that, who came forth about closed captions, right? And for years, we've been waiting. He talked about it two years ago, a huge meeting of it. He said, Man, you can't hear, right? What's happening? So to me, this is very unfair for people with disabilities that even at city council meetings or any board meeting, like here or anywhere, they should have closed caption automatically to help the disabled who are out there seeing all these meetings and having that language on them. And to me, how many more years are we going to sit back and wait? I can add a little bit more to that. NCT we now has the capability of closed caption, but nobody's ever asked what side we use it. So if we get together and ask them, they have the capability now, they have the computer programs that will caption. I thought they had to go through Comcast also because apparently the funding was coming through them. I don't know where they got the funding from, but I know I talked to, what's his name? Alan? Yeah. So these are the broadcasters of the public media. Yeah, NCTV. Yeah, like this, this film that we're doing right. now. Yeah. Should be going to them, but it's not. They're not picking this one up. They're not getting this one, and I'm trying to How follow come? through. Nobody knows. So I, I talked to Joanne. I have to talk to Joanne because she's the one who used to call them when it was ready. And when I called on CTV, they said they hadn't heard about any ships to pick up. I asked you, I thought you called them. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they were supposed to be doing daily doing all of this. When you um, you were the one, you told me that you know that they weren't. Um, I was told at the beginning of this yeah. term that they uh, automatically pick up both the um, Council on Aging Board That's and true. this board. And so he, um, the director of the um, cable TV, um, said, oh, this is definitely our fault. And it would be rectified. Yeah. Right, because Patty even said that they were coming daily. And we and that, that's certainly a priority for us to pursue. We need yes. to have either CART, that's Computer Assisted Real-Time Transcription, or that's the captioning means. But I'd we, like to see for every board and commission meetings that are presented here in the city of North Denver, and this one just moves out this municipality. And it needs to be done. You know, yeah. for years we've been fighting on this. And it's yeah. like people who are getting, are just sitting back and saying, what is happening? Yeah. And I if you remember, know. Rodney spoke to that um, with the Attorney General when she was Exactly. Yeah. And he just asked me that. I saw him three weeks ago. And I said, yeah. And you are our sister's part on could I Could I say um, what I would suggest um, is that we recommend to Rodney that he brings this as a formal grievance against the city, that he's requested requested that let's formalize the process and call it a grievance. But she's once again, saying we, that we take it up the chain of command I think more readily when we when we oh, put it on paper. Why would we have to do a grievance if we're just saying that NCTV now is doing it. No, they, 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 can, can, they can do it. it. Okay, but they can. So I think what we need to do is have Alan, he's great, come to one of our meetings and talk about it. That's total transparency. My concern is that, that that's a lapse of time, too. Do you think that's the best way to proceed? I do. Uh, I, 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 I agree. Could we have him come to the next meeting? 
I think it, it would Monday be very good to have that at the meeting because what I'm concerned is we saw previously things drag on and Not on and him. on. He's excellent. Okay. He's at the next meeting. Oh, yes. Uh, everybody remember who was going to Oh, we can even go to him. It's right in back of the high school. I'll go with you. Well, well that's the, the question. Is it better to have him come to the meeting? He should come here. Have, thank you. Have, well, it, it would expedite things if we had a meeting with him, like say in a week or something. So I, could true, go I agree with that. that. Report, um, instead of waiting right. another four weeks. Right, three I weeks. agree. Three, three weeks. Oh, yeah. Mary Barth, yeah. right, she's right down to the team. Mary Barth, I would like to go with you guys to that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, I would suggest then that let's ask Linda to set up that meeting and give us some thank you. potential times. And and I think um, I would like any to members of the commission who want to participate and go to the media okay. center. It would, be, it would be there at the at the, at, at NCT. Yeah. It's a tre it's a tremendous there. resource. You know? It is. Yeah, it's a good place to go and see it. Can you call me about the new environment? Yes. Do you want my number? I have your number. Yay. So if you would get us some potential Thanks. meeting Thanks. times Thanks. And, and dates for that. So that alternative format, as we said, um, the, the captioning, moving forward on, on uh, captioning of the, of the public meetings and the videos would be, um, would be tremendous. <coughs> and you know, you, you'll see in the balance of this document, it refers to interpreter services, it, it refers to some of, but it's not an exhaustive list of these potential um, just to throw on the side, we had been told any interpreters. I got a list from the state of emergency interpreters and three agencies that guarantee they get an interpreter here on an hour's notice. And I've been emailed that they use gave it to me if they can. But I have emailed every interpreter on there to ask who we wanted to come here, what their rates are, all that information. I have maybe 12 that have answered me so far, and I'm still waiting for a lot more to come back to me. We we also learn. We also learned by happenstance. We left the meeting here, and went over to a nearby restaurant and advertised for them. Um, and we happened to meet a visitor whose work is for uh, an organization that basically provides 24-hour <coughs> on-call interpreter services. If something were to happen, an interpreter didn't show, um, or for some other reason. Um, and they basically provide um, that service. We'll, we will track that, that, that down. Um, uh, Laura Rusher, the Director of Disability Services at Smith, um, can give us the name of, the, uh, of that individual and the organization. So first and priority should be to have, obviously, the interpreter present. If something happens, there is apparently a service available or you can call or a rapid response a, a by a uh, visual link up. Another thing that helps several of my good friends have people in the all the time. Yeah, I think we always have to be careful. The requirement is that we have a, a qualified oh, yeah, sign language interpreter. Yeah, okay. Certified and qualified. Yeah. That's why it's a problem. <coughs> because I'm not. Absolutely. Why is it so cold? We appreciate it when you Came through so, folks, folks are cruising. Let us. I know. Let's I'm move on. Like, Can we stop the AC? It's too cold. It's, it's, it's awesome. This is all we could do. But there's this is. Yeah, I know. There's a whole story yeah. about that. But for middle function. Yeah. Oh, and that was just this. So let's proceed with the with the meeting at this point. I have a question about the uh, about the the sign. It was like if there's like a like a like a election night. They don't have like thing on the bottom for like a temperate for people who are deaf don't know what's going on. I think I say they should put that on on the TV for like for the election night. Yeah, they scroll on the bottom and right. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, we want to get them doing that. The other thing as we move forward in the process, we had spoken about, we had spoken about this is the suggestion that we do a specific <laughs> meeting for um, for deaf residents of the city. 
because this is a significant population of this city that has long been been really limited and excluded. And so as, as we move forward in this process, um, I think it would be really useful to, to um, do some outreach and, and get um, folks who identify uh, culturally and linguistically as deaf to, to have their say and record that. We're going to push for the policies anyway, but we also want to get the constituency, um, the constituency out. So, could we summarize for a motion the things that we um, are going to do? We are going to um, draft some additional, <coughs> some additional language that gives um, a second potential point of entry into the grievance process in addition to the ADA court. We already made a motion that we were going to do Yes. And it's still a draft. I don't think right now we just need to get the language that the exactly. and then make a motion on the final product. I don't think we need to do one of the terms we Okay. And the other resolutions that we will have, we were, are going to project um, the meetings that we identified well, an invitation to or meetings at the information center at the, at the high school, and you will inform us of that. Okay. No formal motions needed at this point in the process. <coughs> no. Anything more on that? We move on to the next point in the agenda. I think that's good. And the next point is highly relevant, which is to have Ruth report to us on, um, on accessibility of the website. I have you done know. a tremendous amount the last month, way more than I ever knew. I'm going to pass this around, but I need it back. There's way too much to copy for everybody. I can send it electronically to anybody who wants it. Mm -hmm. These are just the top 10 development tips for the website. Um, those of us that were in here meeting, and I can show you on the computer today, this little box that comes up on the top, and you can make text bigger or smaller. You can have it actually read the page to you, but there's so much more than just that to be thought about. And this actually tells you what the tips are. Um, this is called WCAG 2.0. It's from the federal government, and it's the standards and what we have to meet, and nobody knew it, including our IT department, but the city is under regulation to meet this by February of 2018. They own the module and didn't know it. When I met with Frank Forbes, he checked and found out that, oh yeah, we have that. The whole module that does the thing on the top, he just, nobody knew it. Um, Massachusetts, the MOD has offered to come and help our IT department make our website um, ADA compatible. So well, that's kind of on the work at a phone call from Frank today, which I can chance to return yet, so he might have more updated news. There's things like, we have to think about readers, giving the screen readers. Um, I forgot her name, our old chair, um, the blind reader. Tori. 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 Tori uses a screen reader. Um, so when you have a picture on a screen, you can't just put down um, display of a library, right. because that means nothing to one person. You have to get very detailed. Uh, the name of the book or the type of the books, if it's on the table. Um, you have to think about people who are going to uh, only hear things. You have to think about people who can't hear and want to see things. No flashing lights. Flashing headlines and banners bring on scopes for people who have epilepsy and things like that. Uh, they don't recommend the color red because it also does the same thing. There's a whole, this whole package that our past friends all about that. Yeah, and they, they have things, special characters that you can't use. Um, you know, this is something that I would know that you would know. When you program a web, you have a heading that goes under a picture or on a column or however. There's, in the program, a place to put an alternate heading. And apparently, screen readers use that alternate heading. They don't use the one that's on the screen. So you have to make sure your programmers are, are using both of those. I already do, but I don't know if anybody else in the student does, so I have to talk to Frank about that. He has a copy of this. What about Antonio? I, I want to talk to him because I'm a bit surprised hearing that. Nobody's ever asked him, so they never even thought about it. I want to talk to him. I talked with Frank. This well, frankly, I, I'm excited. We've got I specific know. areas that we're moving on 
Okay. We get the city to move on this, and I, I, I really appreciate what you're doing. This right here, this is the entire um, WCAG 2.0. And this is the whole thing out. Hold it. Yeah, there's also um, the Massachusetts Disability Committee, <coughs> which talks about you know, the different municipalities having to meet the law. Um, I've got a whole, this is all stuff I can bring up for myself so I can work with Frank and I want you to to our website. I can start on the Disability Commission website now. So I've been trained on the content manager um, with Frank, which is unique. I have a show on how to do it. Yeah, the, the one thing I would say is rather than MOD, in which I'm from Missouri on the level of skill they, they have, but the um, information technology accessibility coordinator for the five colleges, Rob Evelyn, who is, uh, is in the area, is um, a really expert on this. And we have been, um, how can I put it technically, busting the chops of certain of the higher education institution. And it's actually not so much the institutions of higher education, colleges, and, uh, but the, the problem really devolves from Boston and the Department of Education and the Secretary of Education, which has not been coordinating and reaching out to our higher education system for exactly <coughs> what you're describing with these WAG 2.4, 2. 2. And Frank, you just said Frank didn't. He told me when he was training me that he hasn't even looked at the website in a long, long time because every department is responsible for their own content. So the only time he really looks at it is to train somebody. And when he was training me, it was like, well, somewhere here there's something that says we can do this, and it's right there. Well, somewhere else we can do this. Yeah, right there, Frank. <laughs> That's yeah, I'm sure. See, I, I think it would be useful with MOD at some point in the process to have them come out here as we're making the progress also to expose other municipalities yeah. to the fact that we're doing it. If we can get it started here in right. Northampton at these different levels, get exactly. the captioning going, get, getting the website accessibility going, getting the interpreter's policy, um, then we wanted to have multiplier effects in other communities in the, in the area. I was surprised at the number of communities that I've, I've just gone to different, like I always talk to all the different secretaries from all the communities a lot. A lot of them have thought about it, have said, well, yeah, we got to do it, but we don't own anything that will do it, and it's a matter of money, and just kind of general disinterest. I was really surprised, but there are some communities who are already done. I showed you guys one the other day with that little box on the top, and they had already done everything. So, that's really excellent. And they, the, the, one of the communities that um, I looked at, their IT department has offered to, to work with me too. So, we have lots of resources out yeah, there. And there's three levels of this. You can do a AAA, AA, or AA. A is the highest. We need everything. And that's going to take a long time. But if we have to get to AAA supposedly by February. And one the article that I read, um, I have it some place here, talks about there's the federal government is actually actively going out and prosecuting municipalities for not meeting the February requirement. There was a previous requirement um, for version 1.0 that we didn't even know about. So, yep. so we're on top of it. Oops. Good word. Sure. Well, you yeah. just said that the city, Frank told you, that he was having it done for that deadline. Right, and yeah. then we do own the rights. Well, he just didn't realize we did. Uh, so can I, I really want, I'm going to go see the Antonio. I'm going to see the Antonio. Because he does come to see the Antonio. I'm going to see the Antonio. I didn't even look at the module. Now that they know about it, you know, now that they know about it, they know they have the module. Frank's working on it. He's going to get the city going. I want to see Antonio. So that's what I've been working on with the website. Um, that's a lot of work. That's great. Yeah, Frank's on the, uh, um, so that I can start updating others. <coughs> but I want to, when I update the Disability Commission website, I'm going to try and meet as many of those things mm -hmm. as I can. You know, descriptive things right. under the pictures. Even columns. So when you do a column, it says from one page to the next page, it should always be, the tabs should always be in the same place. 
Because if you're working, so a lot of people can't work with a mouse. They can't control the mouse. Right. So they work only with special keyboards and things. If it's in the same place, it's easier for them to get yeah. to. So yeah, that I was a shining example. Yes, yeah, it's exactly what it's going to be. There is a yes. tremendous amount of technical detail here. And I'll say, you know, we're, we're going to take this in the, in the steps to, to basically right. find that. We're just aiming for AAA right now. Just get it in, and then as we learn more, we can move up to the AAA and eventually hopefully up to the that's a good thing. And I do have all this. I just got a binder to put it in tonight. <laughs> so my binder's wrong. I'm going to put it in my whole you really could spend full time expertise. We've had uh, our last meeting. Um, with DeAndra and Linda, I, I brought in the, the copies of the access codes, both the federal and the state, bump on the table. You can spend an awful long time there. This is the <laughs> other major area of technical uh, spectrum. They're complicated, but you know, that journey of a thousand miles, so keep just moving the process forward steadily. And it's very helpful for them to know that um, this is a potential area. What they don't want is to have the feds come in at any point and find it technically a non-compliance because then you lose all management ability to determine your own case. Terrific. And I, I just want to say thank you. First of all, um, you know, for you know, we we you know it, it hasn't been up to the standard that I would have liked and now we're beyond that standard. We're getting there anyway. And it's, it's what a wonderful team and I'm so excited about the um, the expertise that you're developing um, to really take the, the take the ball and run with this. And and then the policies. If I had these policies in place when I started you know, I wouldn't have been running in circles. So, you know, it, it's a wonderful um, paper trail to assist anyone just starting off in this field. So, thank you. And Deandra is going to be a life-saving person. You know, I I just want to say thank you. I'm just yeah. so impressed. It's really delightful. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. So the, and what would we do without her? I, I don't know. know. Why? She's just starting. I know. Yeah, I know. It was too cold for the <laughs> To do any surveying of the street and walkways, huh? Oh God! We will do that as we'll do that as well. So this is good. This is moving the whole process forward and yes. get this moving. And the reason I selected these three policies is I think these are are the, the three cornerstone pillars. There are others in employment and um, that, that will go into the set of recommendations. But in terms of what we have had to deal with as a commission and where we've seen breakdowns. These are the key pieces. So our next item on the agenda is the timeline for adding new members. This was tabled at the September meeting. Okay. Well, most recently we met with the mayor and we um, presented this to the mayor that um, according to the new state directives, um, we can now have 15 members to our committee. 15. No. 13. 13. 13. 13, sorry. Uh, anyway, 13. Okay, well, no, 24. No, okay. <laughs> anyway, 13, 13 members. I'm, I'm getting a little uh, I know. long day. Anyway, um, and you know, this was sort of um, a, a new awareness on his part. He, he didn't realize that because there was a little bit of a complication in reading the, the policies. Um, so I think that there was still some discussion on whether we had to, um, even though that this is a state directive that you know mandate that says that we can move on to um, to 13 members. Um, he thought that because of um, his uh, the sort of legal the ordinance that they have that basically says it's nine um, that we might have to do a language. A language change for the city council to vote on. So, uh, so you know, we could have that together for our next um, council meeting. Does that feel yeah. all right? Well, speaking of that, I know that we were you know, going to be voting on um, Emma, if we have to put Emma on it. And, but I'm wondering, because we have some absence here, are they excused absences? Well, I don't know. know. There are three people that are out tonight. Um, Anna, Anna, Jim Winston, and Jim Page. 
Usually James calls. No one who called me. Now Hannah wasn't here last week either. Uh-huh. Last month either. So, so it's I just three played. and then three unexcused absences. Yeah. And then three unexcused absences. And then off. Right, we have to write a letter in that post. Yeah. So uh, let's just see. The whole the whole point is to you know gear up see the amount of work that's now that's now being done so to keep moving this process forward and what we were proposing was not that we need 13 members but but that be established as a maximum and additional members be be recommended as as needed because we have someone prepared to be an active contributor and i believe that's the only application we have um, at this point Very good. Well, you're, you're freezing, so let's... I know. Yeah, I'm freezing. So this will determine whether we actually have to go before council and recommend this. Okay, okay so okay. then what we have to do is just do a change, a language change on that from the 9 to the 13. Yeah. And then let the mayor look at it for them. Yep. As previously, as previously discussed, and we, we did make a motion. On that. Are you okay? So, <coughs> would you would you take this? Hey, when they I it. Can we can we take this? That's all right. We're almost ready. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. The next the next on the agenda is. The plan meeting with city uh, department heads for um, Title II training, and this came out of uh, the meeting with uh, with the mayor. And Linda has some dates. We'll be meeting with department heads for one hour. That is chair, vice chair, coordinator. Excuse me. Is that? Separately with each department head? No, oh, it's a mandatory the meeting of department heads. Oh. Okay. Oh with the group and we're going to be basically presenting to them the broad picture that we've been looking at that okay. the need to update our self-evaluation pass this over Can I have put that over your shoulder it's cold in here yeah you're talking fast i will do that and do we have potential dates for that but that's we do we we, we said the 13th what we well, have a choice of dates in October? No, I mean November. November. Oh good, what time? Uh, I can't remember the date. Well, it was, it we had know. between eleven thirty and two. Okay. So we had a little is, overlap for discussion. Oh so so eleven to one, five to eleven to twelve? Or what what would be better? I don't care. I think you would set a lot well, I think for press. What time is that? 11, 11.30. Can I get a workshop, sir? This is only a, this is no, only this a door is, opener with the department heads. Is this This is what we hope will will inform <coughs> them enough so that, so that we can have um, and identify some ongoing um, involvement with them, including additional staff training. The staff has to, you know, back, basically reach the people who are doing the direct work, not just department and other people who are for them. Monday, and November 13th, 11.30 to 2 o'clock. Okay. And there That's how long we have the meeting? No, we have that time. Oh, that time? Okay. Yeah. So 11.30 to 12.30? Does that work for everyone? Oh, that's fine. I was like a jar with you guys though. It is cold. Oh, it is cold. It is. I've never stayed. I've been in trouble piping the niche shoes. Don't get it. Off I mean, if it was, I mean, what I could do is bring in a space heater for the next. Don't turn the heat on. Don't no, turn it, it on. is on. It, it's that just, is? It's no, on. it doesn't feel like it. it I'd like to, I'll talk to you after the meeting, but yes. I'll tell you the problem that we have with this one room. Problems with the with the space. Yeah, and we're almost done. So let's just. I know we're almost ready to get out. Yeah. So and that's it. All that we have left is new business. I did want to just mention one topic. Do you have something you want to? Mine's just we 
our bulletin board was going. Did you get a chance to find out? No, I didn't. Okay, because I have stopped hanging on to this stuff. Then it up. Usually I after the meeting, I didn't post the minutes from the month before that we just approved. So I'll hang on to all of that. Okay. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll I'll get get the chops um, I, I do have something yeah. very, very exciting to talk about. That what quickly that um, the bench has arrived. Yeah, I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, bench. the bench has arrived and it has the inscription that you all approved of. It's it's at the DPW because yeah. um, we had to make sure that it was somebody it could arrive anytime and yeah. they, they had the ability. Um, and, and you know maybe I could walk you out and show me yes. where you put it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Are we going to have an actual ceremony type thing? <coughs> We're going to have like a ceremony we should because we did that up in Florence. Yeah. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Because I can check with Pat and Shauna too and see if she's around. Sure. Let me talk to her first and just see if she's yep. going to be around. Because okay. she's the one that worked with us for the charge. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Okay, remember the next meeting is a week earlier, November 14th.